the three missing Montgomery College students continues in Frederick County. And I got to play with Juwan. It was great. Definitely yeah, fuck. Oh, okay. keep going. Saying <laughs> yes to all this. Of course. Yeah, you caught me in a good mood. I don't say yes to a lot of podcasts, but you've been uh, a very supportive yes. fella. So um, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's cobweb season. If you yeah. want it to be a perennial holiday favorite, got to keep it in the zeitgeist. Um, and then also, yeah, when you, you messaged me, um, my... My wife and daughter uh, were in Pennsylvania doing um, Halloween stuff with the in-laws, but my cat was sick, and so I had to oh. stay behind in in New York. <laughs> oh, there you are. Yes. So you stay. You live in New York, then? Yeah, we're uh, we're Brooklyn based. Oh, uh, nice. Um, yeah, we lived in LA for like seven years right after we both graduated from uh, uh, Temple University in Philadelphia. Moved to LA. Um, I loved it. The wife did not. Um, and so, uh, yeah, New York was the compromise, but I've, I've grown to love the city. Yeah. I thought you lived in LA when, um, when I first reached out to you and, uh, it's a yeah, so sorry about that the first make. time. Yeah, for sure. Russell, come on camera. So welcome to footage for play. I really appreciate you coming. We usually talk about, we just talk all kinds of shit on the show. And, um, this is Evan here, not dressed up. He's right there. Hey, hey, don't you hold? You just hold on a second. I'm not. My, not I'm making a drink here. My skull glass, and I got on my uh, Overlook Halloween. Okay, okay. Oh, nice. Hey, that's not a costume. That, it's a is culture. Is that not good enough? Come on, man. And then we have Russell down here. He's. Uh, what did you dress as, Russell? Oh, as your favorite, a honky tonk Disney fan. Yeah. Oh, Hi. lovely. Yeah, he's honky tonk. And I'm Terrell, <laughs> you know me, but I dressed up as Sarah. I just came out the walls. I got the spiders. Oh, fuck. It's cobweb season. So I'm Sarah from the walls. So uh, this is, I, I think this is officially the first yes. uh, cobweb Halloween costume I've seen. Texas oh, Chainsaw I have the, representation. I have the same shirt. Yes. I have the same shirt. But I had to yeah. uh, I had to throw this together and I had to be Miss uh, Sarah because that woman crazy. I wish I did the whole the face <laughs> and stuff. I didn't get that far, but we got the spiders and the, uh, yeah, we, we here. No, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I didn't know this was a costume art. I guess I'm um, Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins. Perfect. Oh, yeah. that, works, that works out. I don't know what that is. I don't smash pumpkins. I, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that works out. But um, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm glad you're feeling better. And um, oh, these are, I'm going to take this off soon but i wore the you know my hand you know, i've been in the dark no so you committed long. to the bit yeah no yes, i appreciate I did. it but um we love your movie so i had to reach out we were all talking like hey halloween episode who can we have as a guest to like you know embody halloween and talk you know get us in the spirit and last year me and russell down there as the honky tonk disney fan we traveled across the bay area we live in the san francisco area we traveled across the bay area to go watch this movie i was messaging you because yeah. barbie hammer happened it was july 21st mm -hmm. i remember it like it was yesterday or maybe the 20th it was early the night before and it was Is loads it, yeah, yeah. Loads of people were out there for Barbie and the Oppenheimer shit. I still ain't seen Oppenheimer, so I can't tell you. But uh, that I wanted to see Cobweb. I was like, new horror film. It had the chick from uh, Mean Girls, and it had the dude. Mm -hmm. He scares me. He plays in The Boys, I think. He's scary yeah, as hell. Yeah, Homelander. Yeah, there you go, Homelander. Star. Yeah, that, that show. And uh, I don't know. We went to go see this, and we were in awe. We loved it. Me and Russell were like, wow, this is going to be one of our yearly watches for Halloween. So, uh yeah, I was like, let's reach out to Chris. So I had to reach out to you. And you wrote a crazy story. I love twists and turns. I didn't know where this was going. Uh, the cinematography was great in this movie. The pumpkins everywhere. Oh, the, yeah. the rotting pumpkins. Uh, the mystery. Miss Divine was very divine. I She was gorgeous. Them lips. Mm -hmm. But uh, loved her. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, this crazy bitch in the walls. We could spoil it a little bit, but uh, this is me. And uh, we just had to bring you on. So, Well, I'm happy to be here. So how did that story come along? Like, how Would you sit in your room and you just looking at your wallpaper and just said, let me write a story about a bitch in the wall. Like, what happened? Sort of. I think I've told different versions of the story because it's all, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a, an amalgamation of different things. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess it really started off just as a seed, in my, a seed of an idea of just... When I was a kid, the scared I, the most scared I've ever been was just lying in bed um, in the dark, listening to every like creak and groan and tap in the house. Yeah. Um, and my imagination just going wild. Um, and so I really just, in the broadest sense, wanted to write something that captured that sort of um, ephemeral 
uh, feel. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it just was a bunch of different things. It was, um, oh yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, just the idea of something living in your walls was always just like really scary to me. And, uh, yeah, honestly, I mean, one of them, I was just reminiscing about this. Do you remember Poot Lovato? Poot Lovato? Oh, no this. It was this, it was this viral image of, uh, Demi Lovato, a horrible picture taken of her. Oh um, my God. and, uh, uh the, the joke was that it, it oh was, God, uh, her, her uh her twin sister who was like kept in the basement or something and i think like uh Mark, that was <laughs> oh of the many God. ideas <laughs> wow i think that was like around the time I, I started writing it so i don't know if that's explicitly um one of the uh, the inspirations but um i i was thinking back on that i was like oh yeah that probably planted a seed so yeah what if that's, lovato was living in your walls <laughs> that's your exclusive here one, one of the inspirations for cobweb was poot lovato wow yeah. okay <laughs> I could see there was a lot of other um, ins- inspirations too. Like, like you named like, um, did you name? Well, obviously, Alice, you wrote it. Uh, Holdenfield, the school in the town. That's like reminiscent of Had- Haddonfield. That was really cool. Yeah, that one's that one's funny, just because that was I actually used Holdenfield in a previous script, the first script that I wrote that kind of got me any attention in the industry that got me my my managers and my agents and I was on the blacklist for the first time was the script called The Wretched Emily Derringer and that took place in Holden Field and so subsequently every time I set a movie in Pennsylvania and I just needed a town I would just call it Holden Field but yes very much just to answer your question yes it is yeah. very explicitly a Haddonfield reference yeah um uh but um, I sort of had forgotten that by the time it had gotten to do Cobweb. Um, <laughs> at that point, I was just—it was like it was like Dairy Maine for me. It was uh, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, Stephen King, Castle Rock, yeah, yep, yep. Well, I had never um, seen uh, yeah. Cobweb before. Before this was—I know they saw it at the theater and had a great. This was my first uh, foray with it. Right before we recorded with you, I watched it just yesterday. So, I. Uh, oh, I hope you had fun. I did. Yeah, no, I had a good time with it. And I was curious what specifically, you know, you were talking about the the whole inspiration for it being in the walls. What specifically made you lean in the direction of a spider? Are you personally afraid of spiders or is this uh, like what would you would you tap into for that? Oh, man, I well, you're going to get some behind the scenes uh, industry talk here. Uh, No, (laughs) I mean, so initially my original script, Cobweb, I it really the title was just meant to be evocative um i just really liked the sound of it and the feelings that it conjured um but when i sold it one of the executives um was really hung up on the title (laughs) he's like but there's no spiders so we need to change the title i was like i'm not changing the title i'll add as many fucking spiders (laughs) as you as uh uh, as you wanted this thing so um (laughs) yeah but yes so when we decided when i was just like all right i gotta go spider crazy yeah like it just uh, i do yeah i am you know, I'm, I'm a normal person, which means that I have a natural feel, a fear of spiders. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it was really fun to just like write as many as I could. There was even more in the, um, in the script and in the, there's a deleted scene, not quite a deleted scene. There's a, a kind of an alt scene that I really miss that was, uh, in an earlier cut of the movie. Um, I guess I'll just say it here. It's, a uh, when Peter is lying in bed and he's got the, the flashlight aimed at his wall, yeah. the way it uh, plays out in an earlier cut of the movie is that a spider crawls across his bedside table and casts the shadow up on the wall, um, the silhouette of it, like a giant spider silhouette. Um, and that's what wakes him up and like uh, frightens him. But, you know, that's just in the classic, you know filmmaking post-production process so you decide what what fat needs to be trimmed so they they trim that scene down but that is one of my um one, one of my darlings, darlings that i uh yes exactly <laughs> um i really missed that but um yeah i don't know spiders are spiders are creepy they're especially creepy to kids and this is all very much for the perspective of a, a child and um what would terrify you know it's all the idea was to be like kind of a back to the basics primordial what is the scariest um, thing just that what are the scariest things that everyone experiences as a child? Yeah. Um, it's yeah. funny. I, I would have never guessed it came from a production note. I actually thought cobweb was more like evocative of just a haunted house or well, like yes, an that's, attic yes. that needed to be cleaned out because you really, yeah. you, you made a kind of like 
Oh, I hate myself for saying it, but you got kind of a Lynchian theme here where we're living in a uh, nuclear family's home and all the horror is coming from within. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I I'm you know, me and Terrell, we love Halloween. Clearly, mm-hmm. Evan doesn't not in costume. <laughs> the, the drink doesn't count. But, you know, what are you drinking out of a fucking plain ass red solo cup. No, a thermos. <laughs> even, 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 even worse. But um, you know, every Halloween you kind of put on movies as part of your decorating. Mm-hmm. And uh, Cobweb, it really is a weird horror film, and it's unique in the way that I almost feel like you've weaponized the holiday in the movie, where everything that gets kind of the the praise and the warmth, like even in Terrifier Two, which is you know people are like, oh, this is the most brutal thing ever. Jack o' lanterns are still a thing of warmth and pumpkins, and they represent the holiday. Yet your pumpkin patch and Cobweb is terrifying Mm -hmm. and it's horrifying and you know as a halloween fan you look at recipes for pumpkin and it's kind of universally accepted that unless you're like cheating a lot pumpkin just isn't very good and when you have a family that's like eating only pumpkin everything feels a little bit dark and uh, did you have like a vendetta against the holiday or just no quite the opposite i love halloween um and yeah so it's just I don't know. I mean, very astute ob- observations all around. I mean, yes. So originally, Cobweb, the title was just meant to be evocative of, yes, like the crev- like crevices and like yeah. attics and basements and that kind of thing. Um, uh, things hidden away um, and uh, forgotten about. Um, and then, yes, David Lynch is my favorite filmmaker. Um, I recently, my, my office is now my baby's room, but, um, previously, uh, I would have a giant blue velvet poster behind oh, me. Right yeah. now you're just oh, getting nice. or bedroom okay. decorations. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think that's very funny that you've pointed out that, yes, so Halloween has sort of been weaponized and, um, uh, in the way, you know, if you're writing a Christmas horror movie, you, you know, people die from like Christmas trees and, uh, lights <laughs> and stuff like that. And that's taking the, the innocent and making it the macabre. But, um, yeah, with Halloween, you, I mean, we all have this obvious affection for the holiday. So yeah, things like pumpkins and skeletons and stuff carry a, uh, a nostalgia for us. But, um, I don't know. That's 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 it's an interesting thing you've pointed out. Yeah, you're right. Well, they, 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 you know, think of like as... Halloween versus Christmas, right? Like Christmas is usually a backdrop to heighten the like tension because we're supposed to be at home with our family. That's why it works in like Die Hard, right? Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. he should be home, not at a fucking office building fighting bad guys. And it, it really makes everything heightened. But with Halloween, when you're dealing with like people that shop at Hot Topic, it's kind of like <laughs> today's our day. And then you get like a unity. Yet in your movie, the threat is being removed from that. And we're dealing with like Peter, who's like a heavily isolated character. And almost everything that we love about the holiday is working against him. Yep. And, you know, your movie is kind of like three bad movies combined into one great one. We're, we're we're dealing with like a bunch of different subgenres here, and yeah. I I don't know it. I don't. I'm really curious how this script came together because me and Terrell. I mean, we are kind of elitist when it comes to this, and we're in the theater, just an empty theater, by the way. Which oh, was yeah, a there was tragedy. nobody in there. I didn't say that. It was just God. Us. Well, there was his dad and his daughter in the front row, and that was about it. And it was just And us. they had a great time. And they were having they a were great time. Yep. So tight. But yet, we were in a theater that is usually dead, yep. packed. Everybody's everywhere. And we're like, oh, shit, this is going to be cool. Yep. And we get in the theater, and we're like, is this the only room that's empty? Yeah. And yet, mm-hmm. we left and had such a fucking good time. Yeah, the drive and- back, that's all we talked about was this movie. And part of it is just, you know, we're fans like uh, Terrell loves slasher movies. Mm -hmm. We all love found footage in here. We all like home invasion films. We all like folklore. And yet your movie kind of embodied each of those like beautifully. So like, is your script like a composite of like multiple ideas or was, has it always been? Cause I know most people would step away from that and be like, dude, it's hat on a hat. There's too much going on yet. Your film almost feels like an anthology with like one story though. Yeah. Um, well, thank you again for seeing it opening weekend. Um, mm-hmm. I think the, I don't think I'm telling any tales out of school, um, or I'm not going to offend anyone. I think the way the, the movie was sort of treated by the studio, uh, was 
you know, kind of similar to the, the themes of the movie itself. It was this misunderstood yeah. child that they didn't really know what to do with because it is a, um, a very strange movie. Um, and I don't think they really knew what they had on their hands, but, um, everyone there is lovely. Uh, but nonetheless, um, yeah, it kind of, uh, it, it, they, they set it out into the world on a uh, Barbenheimer weekend. And, um, but I, I personally, I think that's kind of fun. Like, it's nice to like be part of that, like little bit of like film going history as the, you know, the history. third way. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's sort of a, a big question, but I, I like stories that unfold like the unpeeling of an onion and, um, it's sort of, it, if you look at it from the, it's at, in the most basic sense, it's a pretty simple story. But by telling it through this, the perspective, the very limited perspective of Peter, it gets to sort of, I like the idea. I, I've seen a lot of movies. I like to um, play with audience expectations to make them think they're watching one kind of movie, reveal it's a different kind of movie, reveal in the end that it's a third different yeah. movie. Um, mm-hmm. And it was all of them at the same time, but it's because you were, you know, you're using the genre expectations um, against an audience is, I, I just think a really, um, a really fun and interesting thing to do. Um, yeah, the script is a little bit different in that it plays out more like this has been a thing that has been happening. Like Peter's been hearing this, um, this sound in his walls and he knows he's been hearing it, but his parents keep telling him like, no, you're not. So there's a little bit more of kind of a gaslighting mm-hmm. aspect to the original script. And it's um, sort of about just the, the, the unspoken things within a family, the, the secrets or right. the, the tensions or the, uh, I don't know, the baggage um, that you don't talk about and the way that that kind of can um, bubble up to the surface and uh, present itself in malevolent ways. Um, both metaphorically and literally. So, um, yeah, that was just, it it gives it a very like, uh, relatable. I don't know. There's a lot of relatability there with all of those aspects that you're talking about. Like even from something as simple as the parents saying, no, you're not hearing anything. There's nothing actually there. Like we've all had that moment, you know? Yeah, actually, I mean, to go back and answer your uh, earlier question, that was another one of the, you know, the, this, the, uh, the movie was just an amalgamation of different ideas that I've had for a while. And I finally put them all together after, of course, seeing Poot Lovato. That was the, uh, the keystone <laughs> to it all. Um, but one of them was I just had this idea for a scene that I guess is sort of in the movie now. Um, it was in the original script, but the, the idea that a family sitting down for dinner and you hear like banging coming mm-hmm. from the walls and no one's saying anything. And the, the child wants to say something. He's like, I know, I, I know I'm hearing that, but I know that I'm not supposed to say anything. So that was like a really interesting, just kind of seed of an idea that I didn't know for a scene that I didn't know where to put until Cobweb came around. So um, although it didn't really make it into the final version of the movie, that was part of the inspiration. Yeah, they when they sat down for dinner, um, they were always eating something that looked so gross. What was that? What did you write? Because it didn't look like I porridge. I actually, it, didn't, it looked like shit in a bowl because it was. I, it, they, they were sucking it down too. I've heard. I was not there on set that day. I've heard that it was pretty gross, and no one was happy about it. It looked dis- um, it like slime. I have no idea what it was. Yeah. Wow. It, yeah. I mean, that's per- it's perfect for the film. Um, but no, I do. I can't imagine it was too appetizing. I was like, was are, they, just are they soup. aliens or something? That's what they got to eat to survive. <laughs> and then there was the whole rat They're poison weird folks. thing. Yeah, rats terrifying. Mm-hmm. Like if you had rats coming out the walls, I probably was. Oh, I probably couldn't watch this again. But the rat there poison, were there's. I don't there's like some rats. deleted scenes with some rats. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm glad they deleted. They deleted yeah, for well, a reason. Well, a dead rat. You, you, you would actually maybe like it. There's a there's yeah. a, a scene that they they filmed that I again I quite liked, but I, I wasn't in the uh, the editing room. Yeah. Um, but uh, the dead rat like spasming and twitching Ooh. on the um, on the floor. Sarah yeah, it's was kind of dark. Rats? Yeah, I'm sure she was. She had to eat she something was, she, in there. She was eating rats. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> scene specifically reminded me of the. Um, of the family in Eraserhead, which makes sense after hearing you say that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. your favorite director. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
uh, yeah, great, great dinner scenes in mm-hmm. Eraserhead. Mm-hmm. The dinner table is important. Horrifying dinner scene. It's like where all the negotiations of the family take place. You yeah, know, yeah. You know uh, a good movie that did a um, a Eraserhead style dinner scene was uh, Human Centipede Two. It doesn't get enough <laughs> love, but there is a great dinner scene in that movie. Um, so I, I have not, I have not seen Human Centipede Two. I've always wanted to see. I kind of want to do Human Centipede Four, just because I think there's something interesting about the idea of a human centipede that's been a human centipede for a while and has kind of gotten oh. used to it. Um, that is oh, just existing yeah. the way, like when what's his name in the first movie had his his idea for the human centipede. One that's just like, yeah, it worked, and we've been yep. living like this for a long time, and this is our life now. Um, I think maybe just is like I don't know. They're doing scary movie six now, so maybe just a human centipede like slinking around in the yeah, background. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be uh, perfect. Could, yeah, yeah. Because part three yeah. was weird. You're a uh, a weathered horror fan. You haven't seen two or three? No, just I don't know. I kind of I've seen a little bit of two. It's the black and white one. Yeah. Um uh I think people told me they were bad and I just yep. believed no. them. They're three very stupid. Stupid. Russell, you like three with all uh, that dude, yelling? That man nah, was screaming no, the that. whole fucking movie. You know, it makes sense that you wouldn't like it, but I'm gonna tell yes. you, Chris, you'll fuck with it. No, right, because I'll those movies they're they're weird narratively. Like so, you know, one is a movie and it's kind of it's okay and it made cultural waves just because of subject matter. Two weaponizes that cultural wave and turns it into what if a fan like abducted somebody in a parking garage, right? Great that idea. That does appeal to me, yeah. And it's brutal because unlike the movie, he doesn't know how to do anything. So he's just like mutilating people in a garage. And yeah, I part highly two was kind of gross, but three, I didn't like, remember we talked about this, three was awful uh-huh. to me. I don't know. Three, you, might, you might like it. I'm going to tell you right now, Chris, when you watch it, you'll agree. If it had Dennis Hopper in it, it would be a cult classic, but it didn't. And three blends all the movies together into like a weird metaverse thing. And, you know, I'm honky tonk Disney fan. I love the metaverse. I was just about to say, and I'm such a <laughs> fucking hard time like, taking you so seriously I love with the this metaverse. when you're wearing that. Well, this <laughs> is all I've ever seen of you. So for all, for all I, I know, this is your, your – this is the real me. Halloween's oh when God. I can come out. No, that's not. I'm, I'm ready. I'm a, yeah, I told I'm a, him last episode. He looks like the Samantha Hyde meme that always gets reported as a shooter. At all oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. Here's the th- yeah. Well, at least I'm not Poot uh, Lovato. Um, <laughs> the thing is that I I think Human Centipede Three. Uh, first off, to to be clear, I hate the metaverse. I think it's a crutch for the writing room, and it just allows you to do anything. I think it's been a problem with Marvel for a long time, not just in the movie world. Uh, but with Human Centipede Three, they blend everything up. Actors are playing themselves, and it's a prison where the warden is making everybody into a human centipede. And he's yelling, so screaming like a sergeant or something. Like he's yep. in the army. It was weird. Yeah. Like Dennis Hopper would, and people would praise him for it, but it's not Dennis Hopper. He's not Dennis Hopper. <laughs> no, he's not. I will. I will <laughs> I'll check this out. Um, yeah, you're going to let us know what you think. You have to. And I, I do mean it. It is, um, it's bizarre and unique. And, uh, you know, to bring it back to Cobweb, I, I really do m- mean it when I say that you've made a unique and a, truly what will be a cult classic, unfortunately. Period. It should have had a lot more people see it, but you know, I'll take our, it. our our forte is kind of overlooked movies, and mm-hmm. it, there you don't get more overlooked than opening against Barbenheimer. Yeah, yeah. I was so shocked that that didn't get released <laughs> like in October. Like I was, it was a perfect uh-uh. October movie, right? I no, October is yeah, where you I put mean, the bad I horror will, movies. I, I do think that there. I'm not saying I agree with it. Um, but I have, I do believe the strategy these days is now release a Halloween movie in the summer or mm-hmm. earlier, and then your digital release comes out in October, oh. um, yeah, more seasonally because oh, then that's when yeah. people I get you build you. up the home. hype, yeah, um, which is why I suspect is probably why Terrifier Three, a Christmas movie, was released. In October, I mean, it's kind of the perfect thing because it's yeah, it's the it's a right. horror movie, so it's Halloweeny. But I'm sure the digital release will come closer to yeah. the Christmas season. The Blu-ray um, is December 17th, so you're right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
But uh, yeah, no, the always the intention with this was to make a movie that just felt different from all the other movies being out there to have a very specific fairy tale perspective. That's why Sam, the director, was such a, a, a boon to get because he brought just the perfect sensibility to this. And it was written in a way that was supposed to evoke those sort of um you know, fairy tale bedtime story feelings. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I was not psyched when I realized, um, how few theaters it was going into and uh, what we were going up against. Um, but then I did make peace with it telling myself, well, I mean, this is how a cult movie gets born. And it was yeah. always meant to be a, yeah. a cult movie. As I was like trying to explain to some people, um, when I was like, yeah, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna feel, it's gonna play a little differently. It's gonna be a little weird, but it's, and it's not gonna necessarily be for everybody, which is not what a studio executive wants to hear, but the people it is for are going to adore it. And those are the people we're making it for. Um, so I'm glad that it, uh, you know, reached its intended audience. Yeah. And it's yeah. been, it's been like this season alone. I've seen a lot of people post their movies that they're watching it. I think you've even shared a few. Um, people are really on this movie. So I'm really glad. So I'm hoping people listen to this. If they haven't seen it, they go check this, this shit out because it's great. And, um, yeah, flattery gets, uh, gets very far with me. So if you post some uh, fan art or, uh, for, yes. well, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I'm, I, I mean, I cannot tell you how excited I am anytime I see like someone did like, a drawing or painting or just some a, a digital sketch of Sarah or Peter. Um, mm -hmm. that is very thrilling to me. So, um, yeah, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's reached the people it was meant to reach. And I do, I'm very thankful for that. Are you happy with the film? Of course I'm happy with the film. Yeah, I think they did just, a great job. He's hella um, happy. Well, no, because, um, you know, as a writer, he, the film was born in his brain. And then you you sell it, and I know it's kind of like you're giving up a baby, and you yeah. don't know who's going to take it and how they're going to raise it. I don't know how far I want to abuse this metaphor, but <laughs> you know, at, at yeah. the end of the day, I think uh, you got kind of lucky, because this movie looks fucking great. Oh, and my I'm, God. Ju I'm just yeah. curious, is there anything you would have changed, or... Well, okay. Well, if you want to open that can of worms as a writer, of course, <laughs> like, um, uh, you have to make peace with the idea that film is a collaborative medium and a lot of different hands are going to touch your baby, um, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, and I'm very lucky that I was very involved through most of the process and, um, I worked with great people and we found an amazing director, of course, there are things. I mean, my I'm, I love my original script. I'm glad that it's out there. It's very, very easy to find. I'm very proud of the writing. Um, I love the ending of my original script. Um, and as these things go, that was the first thing to change um, uh, once uh, the development process started happening because. They said it's too dark. I personally think that it's a little... <laughs> I find it kind of sweet in a way. Um, the original ending, what I'll was just, it? Yeah, just tell us. Uh, yeah, I'll just tell you. Um, it ends with um, Peter trapped in the wall. Um, he's, lo he's looking out the hole. Miss Divine's severed head gets dropped um, in front of him. And then it ends with Sarah... Um, saying, uh, you know, don't worry, Peter, like, I'm going to take care of you. Um, you'll never be alone again. Like when you're hungry, I'll bring you meat. Um, and, uh, you know, good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And then, um, it ends with him, um, <laughs> saying, help me, uh, which I guess is dark, <laughs> but Sarah, I who I yeah. think is really the, has been the true victim throughout this entire narrative. She, was. she get she gets a happy ending and I feel a lot of affection for Sarah. So I will say, I don't think I'm going to offend anyone here that I think in the, uh, the final film, Sarah sort of got a bit of the short end of the stick. Yeah. Um, as being, uh, uh, you know, a true, back um, in there. I mean, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, she was, I think a little bit more sympathetic in my, in my telling. Um, for me, the parents were always the true monsters. Villains. Um, yeah. Yeah. Then again, she did kill Miss Divine, who was the most innocent of of all. Uh, <laughs> so it's bittersweet, but it's a horror movie. Hey, the best yeah. people make mistakes too. Yeah. Know? 
Um, but yeah, I mean, but there's so much in the movie that that was not in my original script that I just love so much. I mean, the the dream sequence um, is like that's all Sam. Like he he really made that thing sing. So um, yeah. Make so, movies. It's it's the best. <laughs> I love it. So that ending you just said is very similar to an ending of a movie that came out in 2022. And um, oh, interesting. Yes, it is very interesting. <laughs> and this is when we first heard about you. I remember this night like it was yesterday. Um, uh, me, Russell, and a couple other people from the Overlook uh, Theater. We all got together. So this new Texas Chainsaw movie. I was leading up oh. to it. I, t- yes, and um, there was all this stuff on the internet about the the the, the train or was it a bus or whatever. All this stuff. Mm-hmm. Evan, you watched this right? Twenty twenty two. We're about oh, to get into it. it. So let's talk about this. I love this sequel, Russell. Let's get into this. So uh, I, I I heard all this bad people. I'm sure you got it. A lot of people did not like this oh, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of people did not like this movie. I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, that movie was amazing to me. I rewatched it, and that movie's great. That Leatherface, those annoying ass kids. I would have <laughs> cut them up too. They needed to die. All recording shit, and then that end with that little driving car. He chopped that bitch head off and took her. That was great that was perfect yeah. and i wanted i wanted a sequel are we gonna get that or, or, or what's that looking like netflix ain't, ain't um, trying to fuck with I you i don't know um <laughs> no i have not i mean i'll just i am not currently working on any kind of sequel for that i wish i, I had a lot of ideas I, have a, I had a lot of ideas um at the beginning i i was hired because i had so many ideas i think um and uh yeah so i mean i i, I really wanted a lot of the family in there, um, whatever. I, it's never going to happen. So my idea for the sequel to this was just sort of based on my original sequel, but the title, which they would never go with, was uh, Texas Chainsaw Reunion. And I oh, wanted it to be a yeah. very explicitly a Thanksgiving movie. And so oh, my way no. in was um, yeah. now that – now that Leatherface has returned mm-hmm. at the end, if you remember from the, the mid credit sequence, he's yeah. gone back to the original home. The Sawyer clan all gets back together um, for a big uh, Thanksgiving um, reunion. And, oh. um, uh, and then uh, our, our, our victims unfortunately find themselves uh, at dinner. Um, and the I, I, yeah, I had an image that I just like. It was one of the first things I pitched when I was initially hired, and I, I really wanted it. Um, but I, it was just this image I had in my head of um, Leatherface. Uh, oh, well, of course, uh, a scene. Uh, well, Leatherface in, in this version would, of course, be kind of the grandpa role. He'd be like the old, the old uh, uh, patriarch. Um, oh hell yeah! And there'd be they'd have a young I like a, a little. I like it. They'd have like a little girl. Um, who's like the the youngest member of the Sawyer clan. And so I really wanted to um, reference the first movie with Sally, um, with uh, them trying to get Grandpa to um, hammer her. Um, but instead doing that with like the little girl, like teaching the youngest girl how to, oh, I how see. to beat their meat. Uh, but then she would escape like <laughs> Sally and then be chased around. And the image that I really wanted was a uh, leather face with like the little girl on his shoulders and like the little uh-huh. girl swinging the mallet while and he's got the, the um, love chasing it. the... Um, but I don't think that's... Idea. Idea. Uh, that's not going to happen. Um, uh, but yeah, Damn, you're um, like the American Del Toro or something. Like you have all this love for I'll like the it. monster. Yeah, I mean it's it's true. Yeah, um, I yeah I don't know I do. I've, uh, so how did this all come to? Because it, it was a requel. You know, during the time there was all these requels. Scream had it. Halloween had it. Now you brought on mm-hmm. the Leatherface requel, um, bringing back the legacy characters just to meet their demise. Uh, how, how did this all co- <laughs> come to for you? Um, this was as in industry speak, an open writing assignment. Mm-hmm. Um, they uh, legendary and bad ombre Fede Alvarez's company had the rights to Ooh. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and they. We're looking for a take. Um, my manager called me up and said, um, do you have any interest in Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I was like, sure. Um, but they gave, they sent me the idea um, that they wanted to do. And I was like, all right. And he's like, but the thing is, um, they're never going to hire you. So just go in and like say your own crazy version of this movie. So mm-hmm. that's what I did. And long story short, to everyone's surprise, they seemed to really like my crazy version of the idea. Oh, yeah. Um, which involved, you know, old man Leatherface and stuff like that. <laughs> um, also, I think there was a version that, like, I think um, Drayton Sawyer, um, 
very heavily, I was very heavily indebted to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And the idea was, I forget, oh man, this is embarrassing. I forget, but his, his chili company had become kind of like an Austin stable. Um, so, uh, and people didn't realize that they were getting like human meat, but whatever. The idea was the Sawyers were now kind of new Texas money. Mm-hmm. So they had, uh, instead of, um, <laughs> oh. they had a, they had a ranch. Um, uh, because when I, this was inspired by, um, when I got hired, well, then, no, no, now I'm mixing up events. No, that's not what happened, but I'll, I'll get to that story later. Um, I got to meet Kim Henkel, um, and oh. stay, um, uh, with him, um, in Texas and he took me to a bunch of ranches and it was the best time of my life ever. That was the, the highlight of the entire experience. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, the idea was they were new Texas money and they had a whole ranch that was like kind of like a, a house of horrors. Um, and they were going to have like their big reunion or Thanksgiving, um, feast. It wasn't a reunion yet. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, but nonetheless, I was still hired to do the the version of the movie that um, you guys saw, which was the idea of um, Texas hipsters coming in and um, buying up a town. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so um, I was just, I mean, if you could have told a, a young Chris Devlin that his first credit was going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he would have lost his shit. So I uh, was yeah. very excited to be hired and uh, involved. And I, my, I just go, going back to what we were saying earlier about just being the, I had a script that I had initially wrote that I, I really love. I'm very proud of. There's a lot of stuff in it that I, I wish got to this silver screen, but even more so the cobweb, this one was very much a collaborative process as you may or may not have heard um the there was a, a lot of behind the scenes production kerfuffles um and so the fact that any movie exists at all is a miracle and is one as fun and uh as cool and that looks as gorgeous as this does um i think is a, a real testament to all involved um mm-hmm. yeah i have a lot of a lot of affection for that movie i think it's wildly misunderstood um <laughs> but fortunately i do think um uh, its fan base is uh, is rising. I've already seen quite a few um, uh, uh, very positive responses, um, and also it's a it's a it's a horror movie, which means ten years from now it's going to be completely reappraised anyway. Yeah. Also, yep. um, nuance is dead, <laughs> and your yeah. movie has a lot of it. And I, I have to tell you, I think um, one of the things you took the most flack for was the flag scene, and I just thought that moment at that point in uh, American time was so beautiful. And the fact that people didn't understand it was uh, the root of the problem here. (laughs) And I, I just, I, that little moment to me, just, uh, I'm like, Oh, I fuck with this movie. People aren't going to get it. And Terrell knows uh, that makes Mm -hmm. me love a movie even more when it's, when it's too much for people, but he loves that. (laughs) We, uh, we buried the lead here. I think we should have opened up saying congratulations for putting a massacre in Chainsaw Massacre. Period. Yeah. Cause that's yeah. what he did. Period. Yeah. Cause it was. Yeah. yeah Cause and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was good. Be having that. <laughs> it yeah. was, it was, uh, it was missing, uh, the titular massacre uh, mm-hmm. for, for eight films leading up to it. So, um, yes, if, if that is my legacy, um, I will, I will take it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean that movie is just it's a fun it's a it's a very weird Rorschach test. Um there's yeah. little, the people like uh a lot of people say it's too woke, a lot of people say it's too conservative. Yeah. Um I personally don't think it's either of those. No. Nope. Um nope. uh but I didn't get that. Uh, you guys don't. You, you guys don't need me to explain my own movie. No, uh, I, I mean, not no. To the, to the just, viewers. I, I have a question with your relationship. <laughs> Here we go with authority, <laughs> because you know we were talking about Miss Divine earlier, and when we're dealing with the haunted house subgenre, almost always, even slasher movies, the government is a failure. Right. Like you call the police. They can't fucking help you. They die. You could be in the back of a fucking police car and Ghostface will get you. Right. Like the the government just can't help. And if you're uh, dealing with the ghost, what are they going to do? Usually they don't show up. They don't listen to you yet. In Cobweb, Miss Divine is the only help. And she's like a she comes from a school district. And then. In Texas Chainsaw, it's like a complete reversal uh-huh. where it's like the, the bureaucratic legal system is the villain here. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of being used as a conduit for this Trojan horse, which is like influence culture. And they're just coming in and they're like, 
let's take this land. And, mm-hmm. and I, you know, just trying to get a read of who you are. I, I'm like, dude, either you're coming into like screenplay writing completely neutral, which I think might be the case now talking to you and you're just serving the genre or um, I don't know. You get some wicked ideas in there. And I can't tell. Uh, no, I don't know. I think I, I think I've got a pretty healthy mistrust of authority, and um, <laughs> Good. Uh, I think the especially institutions that present themselves as benevolent, um, yeah. I think, are often doing it hiding. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's hard. I mean, Chains is a hard one to talk about just because, um, like I said, it was a very collaborative process and that mm-hmm. like my original script is a very different beast than what the final um script is and i was not very involved after i got to visit set because it was filming at the same time as Cabo was um oh, uh, and uh um so i was very psyched to have got to be there for a few scenes um but after i finished typing i i sent it off and um uh other powers would be you know various you know whether it be david the director fede obviously had a huge hand in that um everyone uh so yeah i mean my 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 scripts were fairly i wouldn't say there're just there's differences um yeah. and so like things that were you know decided on the day of shooting um you know it's like i i'm very proud of the movie i'm very psyched with the um the part that i played in it but there's stuff in there that's just like well that was someone else's so it's like hard for me to uh necessarily okay take credit. well i have to ask in your original course, script yeah. yes. did you write that leatherface would dolphin jump out of the water <laughs> no no but i love that i i <laughs> see people okay. <laughs> no this is the other thing about um this movie is that i have a weird relationship with it because because it's so different from again not so different i there's just i'm quite proud of quite a lot of stuff in there that i definitely wanted to some credit for um but um uh but because there's stuff that was so new to me, just like the first time I saw it, like I feel defensive of it because it's like, oh. I, I love the Dolphin. <laughs> I love that. I think that's great. Like there's stuff in there that um, was receiving criticism that I was not responsible for, but nonetheless, it was like, no, that rocks. You guys are dumb. <laughs> no. Um, no, I mean, it's such a, it's a fever dream. So it's the fact that he Dolphin <laughs> like jumps out of that yeah. thing, just like that, that works for me. Um, no, actually, um, I think people have talked about this different. That was a, that was a reshoot. There was a different ending initially. Um, and, um, so I just got a call like one winter, um, from Fede saying like, we need, we need a new ending. Can you write one real quick? Um, and I was like, hell yeah, happily. And, um, we had this movie theater set that was like on, on, on the set. And I was like, well, I, I would been dying. I wrote in my original, um, script. There's a whole set piece in a movie theater. Um, I was like, I'll happily recycle that. And it's like, well, we don't have the whole theater. We just have the, uh, the, you know, there's, you can't do the seats or anything. We can't build that whole set. So, um, we devise, um, uh, it was Fede's idea to have like the water, like in the center from the rain, which I thought was really cool. Um, a hell of a lot of water for, um, yeah. uh, but nonetheless, I think it just adds to like the, the, um, cool atmosphere and gives it a different, um, a vibe. I mean, Fede's such a genius when it comes to stuff like that. I was so happy to, happy to learn from him. Um, and just like the way he devises set pieces. Um, and so, yeah, it didn't, I wouldn't, you know, I don't think it makes a whole lot of logical sense. That there'd be that much water. Um, but at that point, who cares? It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I agree. It adds such a, uh, surreal kind of aspect to, uh, the proceedings. Did you write the rain in the original script? Just and I only asked. It seems no, like a weird I, question, but just like Texas, Texas Chainsaw, like I don't Devil's Rejects, all those like gritty desert movies. You never really think about rain, and your movie kind of features it. My there was even more in mine. Mine had a real apocalyptic kind of thema- thematic idea, kind of running through it. And um, the first time I was ever in Texas, um, there was a tornado. And so my idea of Texas just comes with tornadoes. Even I think it's pretty rare, honestly, but like, Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, that was my first impression of Texas. And, um, so 
there's yeah like i said just thematic it's all sort of about like kind of like the feeling the end of the world like um the rate there was a lot more radio happening in, in the, the script or there also just like in the original they're talking about like what's going on um yeah in america but just the idea of like climate change and just all this stuff just the, a real feeling of the end of the world and the movie ended with massive storm and a tornado basically wiping out all of Harlow. I really wanted to make it very, very big and very epic. Um, and we did not have the budget for that. So that <laughs> did not happen. But uh, yes, to answer your question, I did initially write quite a lot of rain into the the third act of the movie. Yeah, that seems like it would cost a lot of money anyway to just have rain. Yeah, well, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I was on set when they were for one of the rain scenes. They just had this giant kind of, um, I don't know what to call it, like sprinkler um, that yeah. was just like raised like 50 feet into yeah. the air, just right. dumping, dumping water on the, the poor freezing actors. The only thing that confused me about the movie was like, I'm so interested in the timeline of Leatherface from the 70s to like the aughts and like yeah. what happened to the family and the housing. And I just... I imagine you could answer all those questions, but I think so. Yeah. Was there any, cause there's no exposition that I noticed in the movie kind of doing that heavy lifting, but was there originally? And no. then they just like, we're like, nah, move past it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's hard for me to remember what's in the script versus what's in the movie. I do think there's passing references to it, but um, when it was decided that it was just going to be Leatherface, there was not going to be any other family. The idea was, that um, he after the events of the original movie, excuse me, um, there was I suspect there was like a police raid on the the Sawyer compound and Leatherface escaped. And um, uh, I guess yeah, I don't remember what's in the movie, but the uh, there was definitely a version where Mama explains that she ran the orphanage. They're in an orphanage, yeah, um, and that. The, she'd collect all the strays and um, it got to a point where they would just dump children on her lawn. And um, I forget what, uh, uh, Howdy, Howdy is what he, he was referred to in the original script. In the original, he was, he had a Howdy duty mask on. Oh. I had like, uh, the idea is that he just never wanted to show his face. And he, he was also squealing a lot. There was a lot more pig sound. He was very feral and piggy. Mm. Um, and yeah, he, he wore a Howdy duty mask and was watching Howdy duty cartoons when we uh, are the, not a cartoon, but the puppet show reruns. Um, and, uh, yeah, that he was, uh, someone who just showed up at the orphanage and she, she was so used to accepting, um, so many, you know, as I said, strays that, um, she took him in and he was the, he, I think I have the same interpretation of Leatherface that a lot of people have, which is that he might not necessarily be born evil, but he was raised within the yeah. Sawyer family and, um, picked up on the, these behaviors. And so if he had a, a matriarch who was more kind and loving, he would, uh, he would be more docile. And, um, <sighs> so, and then once she is no longer in the picture, um, he goes back to his old, old learned ways. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> that was the idea. There were definitely versions of it in the script. And I think filmed, I can't remember. I think they probably cut a lot of that just for expediency. Um, the movie is very short as, as I'm sure you guys know. Yeah. Cut to the bone. Yep. Yeah. I hope that answers your questions. No, it did. I actually feel a little ashamed. I didn't see what you did there with the matriarchy, patriarchy thing. That's actually oh, well. like, that kind of answers a lot. And like, yeah, no, beautiful. You're, I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan, it. Chris. I like your That's shit. why I, I do this. Yeah. Yeah. One by one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so this Halloween, do you have any go-to Halloween watches that you have to watch every year? Or Yeah. Um, May is a big one for me. That's one I okay. always show. Lucky you, are you guys from like Lucky McKees? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, my favorite thing Ryan Johnson's ever done. He edited the movie. Um I love May. I adore that movie. Um, Did you ever see the gender it, flip of that movie? Roman, I think. Yeah, Roman. Directed yeah, by Roman. Angela Bettis. Yep. I think I, I have a memory of it. I 
but I don't know if that's like a memory memory that's been implanted from watching the trailer. I was like so high on Lucky McKee for quite some time because that yeah, movie, same. Yeah, um, I like his stuff. Nothing's ever reached those heights. Though. Honestly, I've asked a ton of people who who talk about May if they'd have ever seen Roman. You're the only person that even knew the title of the movie. What can I say? <laughs> Terrell, have you seen it? Oh, I've never seen Roman. I've, I've seen, seen either. I've never it's seen almost Roman. like it's like a, a fake movie or something. Like it's a yeah. dream yeah. we've all had. But you told yeah. me about it, Russell, but I haven't watched it yet. You haven't seen that? Yeah, I don't know anybody who has. So, sorry, I didn't mean to cut I you off. I might be just one of them. It, no, no, of course. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, it's so cliche, but I mean, John Carpenter's Halloween. Period. Yeah, just like one. Of, it's obviously the greatest, <laughs> one of the greatest movies ever made. <laughs> yes, well, of course, yes. Period. I am very obviously a fan. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I I'm very attracted to archetypes, um, and that is one that is just as it, I said it about Kawa, but it's primordial. It is just back to basics. It is. Um, it's just, it's a tone poem and I adore everything about it. Um, yeah. So that hocus pocus. Yeah. Uh, you got to show your daughter that. Yes. Yes, exactly. I'm very excited for, for that. Um, yeah. I, I mean, love those hocus are, focus. I, I think those are my only three go-tos. I then every year I kind of, um, leading up to, I kind of run the series right now we're doing nightmare on Elm street. Um, so just watched uh new nightmare last night. Oh, Somehow that's always great. Gets, I, I always know that I love it. And yet every time I watch it, I'm like, that, it's still somehow better than I remembered. It's so yeah. good. Um, new nightmare is amazing. Yes. The first one yeah. and that one are my two favorites. They're so, it's so good. The whole yeah. Thing. I like yeah. the meta uh, vibes and I don't know. Yeah. I great. was watching dream master and I was like, is dream master secretly the best one? But then I rewatched Four. uh dream warriors. It was like, no, this is dream warriors <laughs> is still, um, like dream master. the platonic <laughs> ideal. Yeah. No, I love dream master. And I still, honestly, I, maybe tonight I still have not seen six. I have not seen <laughs> Freddy's dead. That's and fine. I don't re- remember <laughs> anything about it. I don't remember anything about dream child. Um, I, think dream child, I think dream child's good. I, I like dream child. Yeah. People don't like I, it. I like it. I remember not hating it. I mm-hmm. just don't remember anything about, I have the Blu-ray set and just for that, that disc does not get a lot of, um, Love. play for me, but, um, uh, yeah. And then the second one, I just watched it the first time in year. I showed it to my wife. That one is just so fun. <laughs> um, I like part two. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's, 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 just such a, a bizarre anomaly like within the series i'm so glad that they kept going because like now you can appreciate it for what it is which is yeah. just uh, so brilliant um but yeah it's you can understand why they were like all right number three we got to go lore heavy with this <laughs> yeah. um, um and three also like that this is not a criticism this is just an observation from watching the first one uh again for the first time in um in a few years with the, like a, a a crew of people who had not seen it before but the the rules which i don't care about but are so flimsy in that one like all right is he how do you actually die and the third one they really kind of establishes some uh, uh, some boundaries here, which is like you're going to be manipulated in the dream, but it's going to like result in a like if if Freddie like shoves your head into a TV, your head is actually going to be in the TV um, in the waking world, or you're going to uh, fall off a building. Whereas I don't know what's going on in that first one, but it rocks um, and <laughs> adds to the the, the dream like qualities to it. Um, I don't know why I went on that rant. Just something that's on my mind. Um, <laughs> well, that's great. I love Freddy. No, I love it's my favorite it. slasher. That's awesome. And I love slashers. Yeah. Russell mentioned that earlier. That's my favorite mm-hmm. subgenre and found footage. So is I'm a slasher any, guy too. Hell yeah. Is there any um, recent films that you watched that you were like, you're fucking with right now? I've been on, yeah, I've been on a good um, streak. Uh, well, I just saw The Substance. Um, oh, that was a good one. I, yes. Personally, I heard a lot of people shitting on that movie. What? And I heard, and I heard the criticisms, and I was like, this is going to be one of those where I'm going to be annoyed as hell by this movie and be so mad that everyone's praising it. And then I saw, I was like, nope, perfect movie. Yes. Loved it. Period. Adored it. I think one of the problems is that people are like ascribing like a portent to it um, that it's not asking for. It is a fun, it is a Brian Usna, uh, Stuart Gordon, Frank Henenlotter, yeah. like 80s VHS schlocky, um, uh, I guess body horror, but that feels like almost reductive. Yeah. Um, 
but it's having so much fun. And yeah, it's, it has something to say, but the, the, its themes, I think, are in service of the gnarly fun time that it's presenting versus a lot of people who are like, think it's trying to uh, say something extraordinarily profound um, and are then getting mad that it's being thuddingly obvious with its symbolism. I'm like, yeah, would you, would you get mad? At, are you mad at society for being obvious with what it's saying about the class? Um, no, you, you adore it for what it is. Um, and so that's, that's my interpretation of, of substance. Um, I saw terrifier three, which I really adored. Mm -hmm. Um, I am re I was somewhat skeptical of the Terrifier franchise. Just, I guess, I don't know. I mean, when the first one came out and I, I knew of like, I'd seen, you know, art online and like in all Hallows Eve or whatever. And he seemed sort of kind of like, I just assumed it was sort of like a low rent, um, kind of obvious oh, a, clown, a scary clown yeah, have we not yeah, had yeah. that before um and it just seemed like it didn't have a lot on its mind and it was just um or not even not a lot i mean who cares about trying to say something but it's just like it just seems <laughs> sloppy and like um cheap but then mm -hmm. and i saw the i started watching the first terrifier and it didn't necessarily change my mind and then i started seeing the trailers for terrifier 2 I was like, oh, this is interesting. How long is it? It's yes. two and a half hours yes. long. It's too long. It looks, looks good. It looks good. Um, wait, this final girl, they've got her dressed as a Valkyrie. All right. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. that. I like a final girl that kind of kicks to the last that you turn into a Me superhero too. a little bit. Well, let me get this. I, so I watched the first Terrifier. I was like, okay, better than I thought. Weird, disturbing, but more interesting and more unique than I had assumed it would be. And then um, Terrifier 2 was just like, Yes, it's too long, but that's sort of what I like about it. Like it, it, it's yeah. a little bit slow. It's a little bit, it's trying to, but it's ambitious and mm -hmm. that's what I love. And it's, it's going all, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's been, I haven't watched it for a couple of years, so it's not fresh in my mind, but, um, it's just going all these, it's supernatural. Um, it's it feels demonic in a way yeah. that like is, um, just so fun. And it just, all of that, in spades in the third one. So that really solidified for me, like, okay, art really is a Pantheon slasher icon. Like he's, he's up there with the best. So yeah. I'm so thankful that we have a new slasher icon, a new slasher series that isn't meta. Like I love a good meta movie. I was just obviously praising, um, new nightmare, but it's not, it's not riffing on previous slashers. Yep. It's fully carving out its own identity. And the fact yep. that it can do that is so awe inspiring when the slasher archetype has already, the, the, the path has been so thoroughly carved in our understanding of how these movies work that to be able to make your own path is very impressive. Oh yeah. Um, I've got like a bunch of slasher ideas and all of them just feel to, like I'm riffing on previously established archetypes. Like I've got a camp slasher um, oh, no, that I Jason. really want to do. Yeah. I want to do a, a Jason movie. Um, That'll be not great. literally, but like, I mean, well, I guess whatever, maybe it'll get made and this can be like a little, a uh, fun, you heard it here first. Um, or maybe if it doesn't, I'm just putting out the world here, but um, <laughs> there you go. Just going back to your thing that I love. I love, I have a, an affection for the monster is I've always loved the idea of what if Jason is only a killer on Friday the 13th? What if there's <laughs> something about that day that is what makes him whatever a slasher every yeah. other day of the week, he's just a lonely guy who lives in the woods. And what if a camper befriended him? Um, and we know leading up to Friday the 13th, oh, something bad is going to happen, out. but but also, why is who who keeps reopening the camp? Maybe there's a larger conspiracy here. Maybe Jason isn't the real villain of this story. So Ooh, anyway, yeah, that's I've got I've got one that I really want to do. Um, we'll see if I get to it. But that is to say, that all, all. I only bring that up to point out that Terrifier is not doing that. Terrifier is its own yeah. thing. It's not doing yeah. Jason. It's not doing Freddy. It's not doing Michael. It's doing its own thing. Whereas I'm just riffing on a previously established series. So it's very impressive is by very long -winded way of saying that. Um, well, and then, yeah. And then, um, audit, I'll just, oddity is another one. Oh, I, I, I love recently, oddity. I, yeah. yeah yes. I really like it. I, I want to watch. That's, 
I haven't yeah. seen that yet, but that's the movie. What's the one he did before? The rabbit thing? Caveat? Uh, I have not seen that yet. That was that going to. terrifying. We I really watched liked that Caveat. One. Caveat yeah. was good. Yeah. Yep. I believe, I haven't seen it yet, but I believe there's lots of very explicit references to Caveat. In yep. The bunny's Odyssey. in it. Yeah. Oh, yep. right on. Okay. There's yep. also, isn't there like also a guy with like a, a thing on his face and he's like chained up? Is that like a Caveat thing? Um, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember Caveat. You caught me off. I, read, I thought I read that. I thought I read that the plot description of Caveat, and there's a guy that you see very briefly in Oddity that fits that description. So I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, it's in, the, in the uh, in the in the asylum thing, whatever that hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I don't yeah, want to yeah. spoil it if Evan hasn't seen it, but yeah. Damn, so this yeah, is Auden exciting. Is You're giving us some tidbits. Anything else? Because I was doing some digging, uh, Mr. Uh, Chris. And <laughs> Ooh, you got yeah, something. What's... What is up with Lionsgate? Uh, this Video Nasty movie that you had wrote. Let's video about, Nasty. Can you talk about uh, it? Yeah, a little bit. Um, uh, I, you know, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's a movie that I, yeah, I mean, it's another. It's like it's a riff on flasher movies. It's all about okay. nostalgia. It's about the dangers of nostalgia of um i guess kind of mm. what we're talking about um which is just the the problems with living in the past um mm-hmm. means that you're not living in in the present um that's just like a really i don't know i think it's a really fun um kind of more ambliny like a little bit more monster squatty kind of oh, okay. um uh it's uh, yeah, it's about a horror, a young horror fan who gets his hands on a cursed VHS tape, um, and he finds himself uh, when he puts it on. It, it it's sort of a, a, a mix between like a horror movie Jumanji or like a horror movie Never Ending Story, where as he's watching this movie, the events from the movie start to blend um, into the real world until he finds himself in a uh, '80s um, Halloween esque. Uh, slasher movie um and yeah a lot of it's very a lot of very explicit references to dream warriors in that oh, one. Um, oh okay and um yeah we shall you know we, we shall see hopefully um it, it gets made sometimes um these things uh, they're in development for quite some time so um but i i have hope that it will see the light of day soon i hope so i'm, I'm excited yeah. for that any other like upcoming things you got going on or what's going on with yes, you? Yes, nothing that has been announced yet so I won't oh, say yeah, anything but yeah, okay. I've got, a, I've got a, a, a few things I'm pretty psyched about. Um, oh, I'm excited. Exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been lucky. It's a, the, the industry is in a really weird place right now yeah. as you uh, uh, probably know um, but I've been very fortunate that I've been working with some very cool people um, who get stuff made and, um, some, some heroes of mine. So, um, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that some, some of this stuff will be in the, in the press soon. Um, and so I can gloat about it. Uh, okay. but yeah, in the meantime, just typing away. Okay. So you yeah, just, right on, man. you just focus on writing, right? Cause I did do some more research and you played a sheriff in some weird long ass title. I don't even know if you want me to repeat oh, it. Dr. Harvey or how I stole oh, Einstein's brain. And lost my mind. So what that was that? So the funny. riff on <laughs> Dr. Strangelove's title, which I is the movie know. I love. I want to see yeah, you in yeah. a movie and, uh, could you act? What is this? What is this? Is this, are you an extra? <laughs> so what funny. is you doing? No, I will say that I, I have been saying this like recently. Um, no, I don't act, but I have so many friends who make stuff mm-hmm. and I'm, it's sort of, it's, it drives me crazy that <laughs> no one has yet asked me to be in anything. I have not put that out in any way. I've given no indication <laughs> that I'm an actor. Yeah. I'm not an actor. Um, but the fact that I haven't even been asked drives me insane. That's um, crazy. No, uh, that's actually, it's so funny that that is, um, that that credit is on my like Wikipedia or whatever. It's um, all over. It's my IMDb. IMDb. Yeah. It's all over. <laughs> no, that's what's, no, that's a, a, um, a friend of mine, one of my dear friends, Pat O'Malley, who is an extraordinarily talented comic book writer. He has a, he has one, um, an indie comic out right now that I'm recommending everyone read called pop scars. That is so insanely my thing. Pop scars. Um, Write that it, down, Russ, for pop me. Pop scars. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think he just released the, the graphic novel. Um, he also ha- has a short film on YouTube called Pool Shark that inexplicably has like 99 million views. Um, but wow. anyway, I he's. Think this, I, I uh, think I've literally <laughs> seen that. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay, there it is. <laughs> um, Pop Scars is amazing. 
pool shark is a very fun like little just like he had access to like a, a remote controlled like shark that you just put in the pool and he's like i'm just gonna make a movie and he made one and it's made him like an insane amount of money just yeah <laughs> because i guess it got caught up in algorithm or something but it's been watched a lot um and uh that was a short film he made when i was in college and it's um one of the uh Oh no! I, I thought that's how I met my wife, but no, actually, it's a different oh, movie, Hockey you, Mom. Which is you met your wife um, watching that? Well, making it, yeah. She was um, on uh, Hockey Mom was a student film that I produced, and she was the assistant director on. So um, oh. we've been together. We've been together since uh, college. Yeah, here's here's Pool Shark. Here, oh, I love how many it. views does it have right now? Uh, 101 million. 101 Damn. million. I thought I was exaggerating with 99. 101 wow. million. That's insane. <laughs> it's funny. There's a shot. Oh, I love this shot. I love this shot here. Oh, wait. No, not this one. <laughs> there's going to be another. <laughs> sorry. There's going to be another one of him um, looking up and a plane's going to go by and then you're going to sit here. I think it's here. Oh, yeah. yeah with the shark underneath. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's, oh, that's eating Doritos. Yeah. My favorite chips. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I did have a weirdly irrational fear of like big pools, like of there being a shark. And it's like, that's yeah. so fucking stupid. Why? Why? There's not going to be a shark in there. It's impossible. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I think that's probably it. I think it probably like it speaks to the fears of a lot of kids. And I mean, I think kids watch a lot of YouTube videos, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But um, that's maybe why um, that's yeah, it's done it's so a really well. popular video. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I recommend everyone listening to this, watching this, uh, check out Pops Cars. It's brilliant. I have I had a little bit of hand in the initial conception of it. It started off as oh. uh, a short film that we were making together. Um, but after that, it's it's all him. It's his twisted twisted mind of Pat O'Malley. Oh, yeah. Okay, I have one more question before we close this out. Oh, but of um, course. how do you feel about found footage? Would you be thinking about possibly making like a short? Because we do a film festival over here and we show all in world camera, POV, screen life, all that type of stuff. That'd be really cool if you could make something and, you know, we could show it. Right, Russ? Yeah, maybe. Evan? There might be a, a yeah, found yeah, footage movie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There might be a found footage movie on the horizon for me. Um, but yeah, I am. Uh, I I love good found footage. I think the Blair Witch Project is one of the greatest horror movies, if not one of the greatest movies ever made. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, like you know, done well. It's it's incredible. It's immersive. I also um, more recently I loved um, oh, Host. Oh, um, great. Savages. That was good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I met Rob years ago, um, and he's a really talented, cool dude. So I was very happy, um, when that kind of, you know, blew everyone's yeah. minds. Yeah. Um, During the pandemic and all that too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. I could, I could, I could possibly be interested in making a little be cool. um, found footage short film. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll just, I mean, what other use is this medium for me to other just to go on random tangents but um yeah what i love about <laughs> blair witch is that like so few other found footage movies do now mm -hmm. is and this is probably a trite observation but it's just like it's true it's just like well so many movies so many found footage movies especially established with paranormal activity which is great um but they're all about trying to tell a class, a typical narrative film through the, the idiom of found footage. Yeah. And they're trying to get their, they're trying to cleverly tell that story in like the way, like, Oh, if we only saw like snippet, Oh, we just catch this little snippet of conversation. That's our exposition. Um, but especially just like you're doing, making a horror movie. It's all about where can we put the camera down in the way that's going to expertly like frame this shot. So we like for the perfect jump scare or whatever, whereas yeah. Blair Witch that they're filming their feet and they're filming leaves <laughs> and they're just saying the, the scary thing happened before they turned on the camera. That to me is so great and it's so genius and everyone is so afraid to do that now. Um, but I really think that that is the, the, I don't know. I mean, there's so many reasons why that movie is incredible that you could literally could not do today um, yeah. because the poor actors were tortured. But <laughs> yeah, Heather Donahue, the fact that she, the fact that she didn't get it, I know the fact that she didn't get it. 
an Oscar nomination is oh, insane yeah. to me because that performance, I mean, everyone, the extra, I mean, not the extras, but like the, just the, the people that you see for like 30 seconds, in that movie, everyone is giving the most naturalistic. Yep. It's just convincing yeah, performance. Honky tonk and creepy. Yes. They were. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And it, so, yeah, I mean, I, I love found footage. Yeah. I just oh, watched good. I'm glad you recently. made my little heart happy. <laughs> But which, which one for the first time recently? Wreck. Oh, wreck. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. The original yeah, yeah. I had, uh, American weird no, one. Quarantine. The, original, the yeah, Spanish I, one. I had never seen it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought that was really good. Yeah. Yeah, wreck rules. Okay. Well, before you go, where can people go follow you and get updates on your upcoming stuff? I know your Instagram people need to go follow because your Instagram is very unique. I will say you post a picture and you give a movie title. Let me put people on. So you up here dancing in a picture. You put what? Boogie Nights. Like you put you. You is so clever. You got you. I don't know what's going on in your brain, but I would I'm I'm thinking of doing that. You post a picture and be like, I don't know. It makes things easier when you got to come up with a caption than you, as long as you've established a theme. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, basically Instagram, I, Instagram's the only one I'm on because it's the one that I care about the least. I get too addicted <laughs> to every other, um, every other social media thing. Um, and I, I'm a weak, weak willed man. And I know that about myself. So a, a few years ago, I just deleted everything. Anything that has an algorithm mm-hmm. showing me what I want to see is too dangerous. Right. So, yeah. um, oh, okay. It, in, Instagram is a, it's like, I don't care. And therefore it's <laughs> the best one to have. Yep. Um, he's awesome. Uh, people so, think so. Oh, yeah, I think he's no, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know what yeah, I don't like he, about yeah, Chris? Yeah, yeah. I'm awesome. You know, right? Chris, yeah. No, Chris, the thing I don't like about you is... Finally. Um, finally. Why, oh, yeah. No, why Why are you so fucking handsome? That makes me... You're like, you're a writer, dude. What the fuck is... Go- like, here, let me ask if he was an actor, but I didn't want to say it. Girl. I know. Well, here's Austin the thing. trying to keep it cute. Oh, I got it. But first off... <laughs> I've been, I've, no, no, no. I've been, you know, I've been me, sick for three days. I feel like I look like shit, so you're really making me feel better right now. No, you look great. Chris, me and you, we both have a kid under two, right? Yeah, he and just had a kid. I was on the street today, and I had just come out of a building, and a gentleman walked up to me and said, oh, will you be sleeping on the street tonight? And I was like, oh, thankfully not. <laughs> I feel like that's a question. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. Russ, you know what? What he you forgot to mention there is say- he just got done wiping a handful of shit on a on a, on a rail <laughs> yeah. next to him. You know? Yeah, I should have I should have mentioned that. <laughs> I think you should feel proud that you have such community minded neighbors. Yeah, have, I I did think that's that. the silver lining like, to that story. Yeah. I was like, he probably would have tried to help me if I said yeah. But yeah, oh I'm not joking. Yeah, let's see what he said. No. <laughs> well, I well, I think you look great. I love oh. your your blonde hair, your big black ears. Um, thank you. And um, I think it's a it's a great look. Well, thank you. Even though you're lying, I appreciate <laughs> it. Awesome. So you wearing play? that when they asked you if you were going to be homeless? No. He didn't wear it. Well, if he did, it would have asked something else. But anyway, so Chris, did you uh, did you plug your Instagram? What's your Instagram again? Uh, Chris Devlin eighty nine. Perfect. Okay. So, if anyone says find out how old I am, that's that's your answer. <laughs> oh, duh, eighty nine. Duh, I'm eighty eight. So uh, Terrell eighty eight. All right. So <laughs> I'm just saying, dude, you don't you don't look a you don't, you don't look a day over over thirty five. So eighty nine. Yes. I would have never guessed. <laughs> oh, There's yeah, another reason I'm glad you at this episode. <laughs> so uh, thank yeah. you again, Chris, for joining our crazy asses on this show. This was um, very fun. I'm glad. I'm I said glad yes that this. you joined us because I was really nervous to talk to you and be like, even though we chatted in the past, but for you to come on this. So I'm excited. Happy Halloween to you and you as well. To you and yours. To go, yeah, everyone need to go watch Cobweb. Period. Sure. Watch Cobweb. And Texas Chainsaw Who, too. Watch them both. And Texas Chainsaw Cobweb. You can watch on Hulu as part of Huluween. Um, mm-hmm. It is under the very scary section. My wife, I asked her which one do you think it's going to be, and she said scary. And oh. uh, it was not. Ooh. It was in the scariest, <laughs> Chloe. Um, and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is on Netflix, and also you can mm-hmm. watch uh, Cobweb on iTunes or Amazon Prime or whatever. You can buy it. Blue, I have a Blue, 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 Blue,
Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh um, my David god! Lynch. Physical media as well. David Lynch, dude. Yeah. He's oh my god. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, Samara gonna um, get you, Evan. Sarah gonna <laughs> get you. All right. Well, that's it for this episode, y'all. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hey, Chris, you you Thanks rule, for man. To footage for play. If you enjoy the show, please consider leaving a review, sharing it with a friend, or simply hitting like. These small gestures are a great free way to support this mayhem, and if you find some footage we should be fondling, email us at footageforeplay at gmail.com. Check back every Tuesday and Thursday for new episodes, and remember, don't skip the foreplay.